So I saw a very nice formula on Wikipedia about the curvature of a curve in your plane, but it didn't give us any proof. It's okay though, because I'll do that right here for you guys. Check this out. Here we have our factor function, and this is the formula for the curvature that we want to end up with. So here we go. First, curvature, kappa, is equal to 1 over the magnitude of the derivative. So just think about this as like its velocity. And then times the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent factor with respect to t. And let me remind you guys that capital T, the unit tangent factor, is defined to be the velocity, yeah, just think about it as a velocity, and then divided by the magnitude of that. And now we just have to work this out, and hopefully we can end up with that. So first, get the derivative. I'm just going to write it as v prime. No, I'm v with an arrow. And I'm not going to put down the parentheses t, because otherwise it's going to be too messy. So this equals this derivative, which is just x prime, and then i, and then we add this derivative, and then j. Done. Next, we need the magnitude. So the magnitude of any factor, we can just go ahead and square root. The first component, we square that, so just x prime and squared, and then we add the other component, and then we square that. Again, done. Next, to get this factor t, we just have to do this divided by that. And I'm not going to break it down into like the i and also the j component. I'm just going to put it down as one big fraction. So, capital T equals, here we have x prime i plus y prime j over square root. And here I'm not going to write down the parentheses just to save some time, so x prime squared plus y prime squared. Now, what's this? Yes, we have to look at this and then take the derivative of this. And this is a big fraction, so we have to use the quotient rule. And after that, we have to find its magnitude and then simplify it. But let's just go ahead and continue. So dt, dt. Use the quotient rule, let me write down the top first. I'm going to bring the bottom to the top, so we have the square root x prime squared plus y prime squared times the derivative of the top. Derivative of x prime is x double prime, just like the acceleration, and then right here we have the i, and then we add, this right here is y double prime, and then j. Okay, and then we will have to subtract the top function, which is x prime i, and then plus y prime j, and then multiply by the derivative of the bottom. Square root will get something over 2 square root of the inside, x prime squared plus y prime squared, and then use the chain rule. And be careful, x and x prime, they are both functions of t. Right here, we put a 2 to the front and minus 1. So we first get 2x prime, but we have to take the derivative of x prime, which is x double prime. And then we add, for this one, do the same thing, we will have 2y prime and then y double prime. So that's the top, and then all over the denominator squared. So we have the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared, and then we will also have to square this. And if you work out the inside, this and that cancel, the bottom just they cancel, so we just have this right here, which is quite nice. x squared, x prime squared plus y prime squared. Okay. Now, how can we simplify this? Notice we have this fraction here on the top. One thing we can do right away is we can factor out the 2 on the top and cancel with this 2 on the bottom. So cancel, cancel, cancel. And then let's multiply the top and bottom by this so we can get rid of the complex fraction situation. So multiply the top by square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. And let's also do the same thing right here. Square root of 
x prime squared plus y prime squared. But notice, this right here is just the one half power, and then this is to the first power. First power and also the one half power, just add the powers together, we get three half power. So that will be the new exponent here. Now, for the top, we will just have to do some more work for this. So check this out. I will take this times that, the square root cancel, so we will just get this inside. So x prime squared plus y prime squared, and then we have this, which is x double prime i plus y double prime j. And then right here we will have to subtract, and then this and that cancel, so we have to do this times that. So that is x prime i, and then plus y prime j, and then times this right here is x prime, x double prime, plus y prime, and then y double prime. Now, let's just focus on simplifying the top. What we will do is just multiply it out and hope for the best. So, if we look at this times that, we get x prime squared times x double prime, and then we have the i, and then take this, times that, we get x prime squared y double prime j, and then we take this times that, we get plus y prime squared x double prime i, and then take this times that, we get plus y prime squared y double prime j. And then I'm going to subtract. And then let's just multiply this and that, so this is x prime times x prime, so that's x prime squared, and then x double prime, and then i, and then continue. This times that, we will have plus, and then x prime, y prime, and then y double prime, and then also the i, and then take this times that, we get plus, let's put this down first, so x prime, x double prime, and then y prime, and then j, and finally we add, this times this is y prime squared, and then y double prime, and then j. Cool. And of course, we will have to distribute the negative, so let me just erase the parentheses, and then change all the positive inside to minus. Right, so subtract, subtract, subtract. Now, have a look. This and that happen to be exactly the same, but opposite sign, so we can cancel them out. Very nice. This and that we can also cancel. Huh, very nice. And um, that's pretty much what we have left. And we just have to uh, factor out the i and all that stuff. So, right here, let me just rewrite the numerator. And we know the denominator is just that. So, let's see, for the i, we have this, that has the i, likewise that. I'm going to factor out the i and put that at the end. So let me just write this down first. We have y, let's put on the x first, so x double prime, y prime squared, yeah, and then minus, and uh, here we have x prime, y prime, and also y double prime. And then this right here is with the i. And then next we will have to add, here we have the j, and here we also have the j. And then this right here we will just have x prime squared, y double prime, minus x prime, and then x double prime, and then y prime, and then j. And then that for the denominator, so all over, let me just put this down, x prime squared plus y prime squared raised to the 3 over 2 power. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is what we need right here. But then, we will have to take the mandiant cube, right? So, how do we do that? We will have to look at the x component, right? The i component, technically, so it's this over that. And then square it, and then we add that with this component here. Right? And then square it, and then put that inside the square root. So, let's see how that goes. So I'm just going to 
write this down right here for you guys. So once we take the magnitude of this thing, I'll put down the result. I'm going to open a big square root. So my first component right here, I'm just going to write it like this. X double prime y prime square minus x prime y prime y double prime and then over that denominator so x prime square plus y prime square raised to the three half power and then this thing squared and then we will have to add that with this over that so x prime y double prime and this right here has the squared minus x prime x double prime y prime and then over that denominator x prime square plus y prime square raised to the 3 over 2 and then square this okay and then let's just really hope for the best let me erase this real quick do you guys like my new eraser anyway though so what we can do is we can factor out the denominator and then square that right so if you take a look right here real quick once we factor it out, square and then the one half power cancel. So on the inside here, we can have parentheses x prime square plus y prime square and then raised to the third power. All right? And then right here we have this thing square. So x double prime y prime minus x prime y prime y double prime and then squared. And then we add that with this thing squared, which is x prime squared, and then y double prime minus x prime x double prime y prime squared. Now, here, we can actually factor stuff up. Do not multiply this out. In fact, I did that in my first take, and then it went really bad. So I'm remaking it because I want to give you guys the best uh, solution for this question right here. So notice here and here we can factor out y prime right here, right here, right? And keep in mind, that's still inside of the square. So when you factor that out, we are really going to get y prime square on the outside. And then we have this, which is x double prime and then Oops, sorry, this right here has the squared, right? X double prime and then Y prime squared. Yeah, so we can factor out the Y prime and then still squared, but this right here, we still have one more left. And then minus X prime, and then this is Y double prime. Cool, and then square, okay? And then right here, do the same thing. Here though, we can factor out X prime to the first power so I will do that right here x prime but here we have this square so square that and then we have this x prime to the first power and then y double prime and then minus here we write down y x double prime and then y prime and then this is to the second power and this is still inside now have a look right here is this the same as that? No. This is just a negative of that, right? But thanks to the square, the negative doesn't matter. So what we are doing is this. We can factor out a negative and then write it as x prime and then y double prime, thanks to the negative here. And then write that down next. So minus, y minus x double prime and then y prime, okay? And then we are going to just square this. And the negative just go away, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah? So in fact, have a look. This, it's the same as that, isn't it? Yes. So the truth is we can actually factor this. Let me do this in blue. We can actually factor this and this out. So right here, I'm still inside of the square root. We have the x prime, y double prime, minus x double prime, y prime, and then square. We factor it out. 
and then right here we have the leftovers which is let me write this down first which is x prime square plus y prime square Whew. very nice huh so what exactly we have is this the magnitude of that thing is going to be let me just write down everything again we have the square root this thing so 1 over x prime square plus y prime square and then to the third power yeah and then next i will put this down next which is x prime squared plus y prime squared and then lastly we have this little thing which is parentheses x prime y double prime and then minus x double prime and then y prime squared let me just erase this a little bit x double prime y prime and then square Whew, very nice huh so take a look and what we are going to do is we can simplify it a little bit this and that cancel cancel and then we will have the second power right so now we have this square over that squared really neat huh in fact what we are going to get is square and square root cancel on the bottom we just have x prime squared and then plus y prime squared yeah and then as of the top we have that but remember when we take away the square root and then the square this thing right here could be negative we make sure to have the absolute value around it to ensure the output is always non-negative so we have absolute value of this which is x prime y double prime minus x double prime y prime yes just like that but there's one more thing there's one more one more thing what is it have a look we still have to divide it by the magnitude of the, the factor v so i'm just going to put this down right here seriously just prove this formula once you can use this formula because you do not want to find the curvature of any like um, curve like y is equal to f of x by going through this over and over yeah seriously this right here is so 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 much better than the traditional way but anyway though ladies and gentlemen the curvature kappa is equal to here one over that which is this right here that's why i didn't erase that so x prime square plus y prime squared yeah i finally put on the parentheses because we're almost done times this thing which is that thing so absolute value I'll put this down in red absolute value x prime y double prime minus x double prime y prime and then over parentheses x prime square plus y prime squared oops this square should be inside here and then that now the square root is the half power and this right here is to the first power one plus one half ladies and gentlemen k well kappa it's equal to the top is absolute value of x prime y double prime minus x double prime y prime over here x prime and then we square that and then we add y prime and then we square that and then raise this to the three half power okay this right here is the curvature formula and do this it's much better than all these steps <laughs>